Hey, now it's Sunday, the 19th, yeah, of July. Hello, I got Opeth on. Roger Coleman sent this to me. Roger Coleman's been very kind to me. If you happen to watch Roger, much love to you and your wife. Hello. My eye is much better. I got drops um, for it. Been doing the cold packs. I do vitamin C anyway. So, <clears throat> it's much better, people. Thank you. Having my coffee this morning. I'm just going to riff. Because the main thing on my mind is what was on yesterday. And I think about the comments. And uh, I think this, I think about everything. Maybe too much. But that's what I do. Yesterday someone said try to be more optimistic. And I deleted it. And it's like, you know. That didn't help. <laughs> that's what I want to say about it. You know, I could just go on, but it's like, <coughs> <coughs> that person don't know a damn fucking thing about what's going on with me, or how optimistic or not optimistic I am. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm doing fine. I'm a realist. I just deal with shit, okay? It doesn't... I, I'm not the sort of person who's always needing to laugh stuff off. However, I do appreciate uh, humor, and I use it um, in my life. Um, when I want humor, I seek it out. Like, for example, last night I decided to have a little time for some laughs and watch some Cedric the Entertainer. Uh, just some of his gags. You know, the man is massively funny. But on a regular basis, I don't need it. And the way that people are constantly joking on Facebook, uh, that's annoying to me. I think it really keeps us um, neutered. You know, if they can keep us laughing, then they can keep robbing us. I'll show some music, but right quick, someone mentioned that uh, I got a comment from someone who said they had never commented before and uh, really liked the Bemis performance. Thank you. I just heard from the Essential Fest. They're going to be putting the Essential Fest that I just performed in online this coming week. Can't wait because um, I have a copy of it already and my performance is better. And also, um, they... They had a bigger crew, so the capture of the performance is pretty impressive to me. I can't wait to share it with you. And if they allow me, I will post my performance on my channel. Otherwise, I'll give you the link. And you can watch um, as much of the festival as you want. But I'm very pleased with, with my um, performance. Made myself a personal CD of my performance. That's... Uh, still from the stage shot so I'm uh, hanging tough and I um, want to just uh, bring up Miles before I talk about anything else so Miles Davis and his 80s output is a bone of contention for some people who are just insisting that he, he got to a point and it was no good anymore it's, it's only partially true. And this is what I want to say to some of you musicians. I won't say your names who, are, who don't think much of this album and your musicians. I challenge you, personally, to track what it is on side two. I challenge you to throw, throw down something as funky and nasty and as stanky as that. As that. You think you got something to say about this album? Let me hear you top that track alone, what it is. Because half of y'all can't. You can't. I'm listening to your music. I'd like to hear you put some stank down like this. Miles Davis was a bad motherfucker, you know? People trying to diss this album and Tutu and stuff. And like, yeah, take your opinion off and turn your ears back on. And then... Again, if you think you're so badass, let me see you top it. How's that? Yeah. 
How's that? So, music, yeah. Had some fun last night. If you watch, if you, if you follow me, you saw what I posted. Ike Yard. Ike Yard. On Factory America. A very chugging electronic, but also natural instrument. It's very, very unique how they use the bass guitar on this. And it, it sounds, until you listen closely, you think it's electronic. But it's just a bass guitar being used in juxtaposition with the... Uh, arpeggiated and repeating synth blurbs in there. This album still sounds really, really unique. And um, like nothing else, it still sounds modern. And this came out like what, 1982, something like that. Ike Yard. When Factory Records came to America. I was all over the place last night listening to music and enjoying everything very much. Salvation. This is Gypsy Carnival Caravan. Um, I don't know if they were in a San Francisco band, but they sound like it to me. This is 1969, Incarnate. Um, this is a real period piece to me. The um, lyrics, you know, because they're talking about hippiedom, you know, and just about how the country is um, trying to deal with this whole phenomenon as it were you know is it real is it fake and as a result this is just really very good musically it's good too but um it just sounds really on the money salvation gypsy carnival caravan really really good here's one of my favorite old albums okay top 100 albums this definitely is one of them the Eyes of Blue in the Fields of Ardith. I believe they're from Scotland. John Weathers was in this band before he joined um, Gentle Giant. Uh, some members of the band Man were also in this band. Liner notes by Quincy Jones. I mean, Quincy Jones recognized their um, high level of um, musicianship. This is really good. It goes everywhere from rock to progressive rock to seamless pop. They do a um, tribute to the guitarist Django Reinhardt. Sounds just like Django playing, but it's the guitarist in the band. The Eyes of Blue. I used to have Crossroads of Time. I'm so sorry I sold it. I didn't like it as much as this one. Probably now I would like it a lot. But this is one of my favorite albums, period. It, it doesn't matter the genre. This is one of my favorite albums. It just comes at the top of the list. Okay. So, yesterday, what did I do? I had noticed online that this, this, I guess, is it a consignment store or something that's out in Bellevue, where I've been a few times where the, he gets in used records, and he had posted online that he had recently bought a collection, and I had been thinking about it, and I said, mostly what I see in this picture is Kiss, and Aerosmith, but I'm going to give it a shot. So I went out there yesterday, didn't find much, but I found a couple things. So um, and it was something to do. It was hotter than hell yesterday. So it was nice to get out of the house. And uh, it's, it's, um, I had a nice time. Um, people were nice. Um, most people were masked. Um, the owner of the store wasn't. I, I don't understand how you can be running a business unmasked. But this is what I bought from him. Fever Tree, their 1979, their 1970 album on Ampex, because they had been on Uni. And um, I do like Fever Tree. Nothing really earth-shattering, but I just like the general sound of the band and the guy's voice. Now, the surprise for me on here is they do a version of the song Come On In by Sean Bonniewell of The Music Machine. That's my favorite song by them. They did the, they had the hit Talk Talk back in the 60s. But their version on here is really good. Now the other surprise here is, and I was expecting, honestly, I was expecting to diss it. Here on side two, they do a sidelong version of Hey Joe. I mean, just listen to anyone that knows that old song. 
you're going to play the song Hey Joe for a whole side. Expect, I, I would expect to be bored. It's like, what can you do with it? And they just about pull it off. It's like it's it's better. I listened to it longer than I <laughs> thought I would. Fever Tree. This was a, this was a nice find yesterday. Fever Tree for sale. I was real happy to find this, although it's not the original uh, album version. It's remixes, but still, I've never seen this. The Beat Nigs, 12 inch 45 for the song Television, Drug of the Nation, Breeding Ignorance, and Feeding Radiation. Boy, did they tell it right. You know, this is a unused sound remixes, and they're all really, they're cool. But what a song. You know, it just, it's really where we're at. Television has, 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 um, hypnotized America, the world. That's why Trump is president. Oh, he's on TV. He must be cool. It's a nightmare we're living in. I'm just telling it like it is. It's a nightmare. Okay, this is not new. I just pulled it and played it last night because it's like, uh, it's one that I kept. And I'm glad I did. Battles, mirrored. Um, out Anthony Braxton's son was in this band originally, Teande Braxton. They had a very interesting concept with this album, uh, with this with this album, where they're playing two instruments at the same time, keyboards and guitar, like this, you know, at the same time, and then doing this with the parts, which you can hear. It's really only um, that interesting for a little while. Thankfully, several of the compositions on here are beyond the novelty of what they're doing. So I'm glad I kept this. Battles, this is a good one. Yeah, the drummer was originally in the band Helmet. He puts his crash cymbal way up high and has to really reach for it. I like that, to watch him. Here's a Belgian band that I like that went commercial. But when they went commercial, they were still making good songs. But it's the prog side that I like the most, Machiavelli. From Belgium, Mechanical Moonbeams. Love that artwork. Love this artwork. Love those gatefolds. And I love the Harvest label. They're on Harvest. This is real good. And they have a single up here, Rope Dancer. I have it on 45. Beautiful song. Uh, I see where uh, Machiavelli is still going and has done concerts in the recent 2000s. And they sound great. It's a beautiful song. If you don't know Machiavelli, it's that keyboard oriented, almost Italian in sound. Yeah, this is more Italian than English. Machiavelli. Love the band. Okay, another one that I found um, out in Bellevue yesterday. I had never seen this before. Robert Wyatt, The Peel Sessions, it's a 45, so it's only four tracks, but I had never seen a Robert Wyatt Peel Sessions, I like these on Strange Fruit, I've got like just a few of them, but it's a series that, you know, if, again, if it was, if I were able to collect them all, I probably would, Robert Wyatt is just something special, it's just a special cat, you know, he's an imp, you can tell he's a impetuous and um, sort of guy that would get himself into trouble, you know, um, being in just, you know, full of fun and full of shit at the same time. Loved it. Love Robert Wyatt. Got another Black Uhuru yesterday. Since me, I've been wanting this one. Michael Rose is my favorite period of the band when he was the lead singer. And this is great. Since me with Puma, and Ducky, and I haven't smoked any Sinsamia in quite a while. It's been quite a bit of good um, uh, Kush types of Kush coming around, but I haven't had any Sinsamia in that I knew of in years. Love this album though. Love Black U Uhuru, and I was really happy to find this. Someone, I was, someone was just talking about it. I had just pulled my FM album, because I hadn't played it in a while, 
And I did. I mentioned Ben Meek, but I didn't mention Nash the Slash, and someone brought him up. And here's a 12-inch by him that I picked up yesterday. Bedside Companion, uh, just four songs. Really haven't played it yet. I put the needle on, but I was kind of preoccupied, so... But I got a nice to slash in for the collection yesterday. I, I understand that he's already passed away. Sorry about that. So that's what I got. Oh, well, I got one other one, and I would. I picked this up. Wasn't sure. And damn it, yes, I already have it. So here's another one that is for sale. Um, if someone's interested, I sold. Um, the Patrick Gautier, I, I, I sent that one off. But this is a Frank Zappa. I thought, I wasn't sure if I had it. Uh, feeding the, the Monkeys at Ma Maison. And whoever had it, I'm going to, I'm, it got pulled apart. I'm going to um, uh, glue it back together. But this is in uh, brand new shape. I wasn't sure when I saw it in the store, uh, but I already own it. So if you're interested in this, I'll sell it to you, this one, because I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna have to uh, rip, glue this cover top together. I'll sell this to someone, uh, I'll take a loss, 10 bucks plus postage, how's that? Just uh, email me, um, derekvon at gmail.com. I'll put it underneath the video. But yeah, I'll, I'll sell that. Here's a new addition from a few days ago because I went down to Homer's. Um, they showed an update of their used records and I missed it, damn it. I missed it. I thought to myself, I saw Jan Garbrick, one of his early ones, Esoteric Recordings. And I thought to myself, even though I'm in Omaha, I, 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 as soon as I saw the video, I went down there. I said, I probably missed it and I did. Even here in Omaha, there's there's a few other folks who are did know what's going on. It was gone. So the only thing left to get, and it wasn't, but it, I didn't have it, but this was marked down real low, so I got it. Mr. Jones by Elvin Jones. Uh, I don't know how you can go wrong with an Elvin Jones album, if for nothing else, just to study his drumming. This one is mellow. Quite a bit of this is medium tempo, but the playing is top rate on here, George, George Coleman and Pepper Adams and Joe Farrell. Uh, Elvin Jones, uh, there's always something to appreciate about his records, so I got that. And the other one I got that I'm so glad that I got this, this was this is a surprise, but not a surprise. I kind of thought it was gonna be good, but it was like, oh, this is real good. Linda Perhax, who had put this album out back in the either the 60s or 70s, uh, par parallelograms. It became a kind of a cult classic. I've got the reissue because it was really ahead of its time. And she's not a dedicated musician, but as a result, she's make she makes magical music, and this is really good. Julia Holter is involved. That picture really captures it. She's an older woman, but look at the look in her eyes. She's really on a cosmic trip, and it comes through. This is beautiful. And there's a couple things in here that are downright um, electronic and just different. This is very good. Two albums. I Am A Harmony. Out of all these new records, well, of all the records that I got in that I didn't have, this is the best of them. This is wonderful. Linda Perhax, I Am A Harmony. And I've had contact with her. Chris Oliver, if you happen to see this, um, I noticed at first that she was friended with him on I, uh, on Facebook, and then then we friended up. I've had at least one moment of um, contact with Linda. So those are the records I have to show, and the time is getting on. Um, I do think it's important for me to just be real, honest about where I'm at about things. You know, regarding COVID, regarding racism, regarding everything. Um, I want to encourage us all to do our best and be as happy as we can, but be realistic because we need to be realistic in order to approach 
these problems better because every time I wake up in the morning and listen to the news and listen to updates, it's not good. And all I hear, not all, but the main thing I hear is politics being played. And it's stunning to me that adults who claim to be mature and smart are still completely under the sway of economics, worried about that flow of, of money and power, still not recognizing that we'll go down with the ship if y'all don't get it together. You know, mm. so that's, <laughs> that's all, that's, 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 that's informing my, my view and every, and it directly affects me. I can sit here in my house in Omaha and shut the world out and pretend, but that's not who I am. But I'll also tell you this, as a black person, every time I step foot out of my house and do something in this, in, in the community, I am reminded merely by the color of my skin of what's going on. So I don't have that white privilege. It is a white privilege. Some of you white people can act like everything's just fine. Well, nothing's happened to me. My world's just fine. I can't do that. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it. I want things to get better and change. And I want to be a part of it, have been a part of it. I'm looking to see what I can do next. So, on a real tip, I'm doing just fine. No fake hope here. No fake optimism. It's all real. And keep talking to me, people.